In this video, we're going to be building some frozen ponds. This is going to be part of a series I call Dangerous Terrain, in which I build Dangerous Terrain. This is going to be a no resin build. Since these ponds are for wargaming purposes, we want them to be as flat as possible, and so a resin pour doesn't really make sense here, even though that's usually the go-to material for these sorts of things. To start, I used 1 8 inch hardboard for the bases. Lowe's and Home Depot have cut back on their hardboard and MDF offerings, and this was the best thing I could find. I had to buy a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet of this, since they no longer sell pre-cut 2 foot by 4 foot sheets. You can get this cut at the store, but according to the guy that cut it for me, that might not be an option for much longer, since apparently management thinks 1 8 inch hardboard is too hard on the blades. But I digress. This hardboard is similar to the hardboard I've used in previous projects, the main difference is that uh, both sides are smooth. I would still recommend cutting it with a jigsaw to minimize the layer separation that occurs when you break it apart like this. I wanted to see if I could cut this stuff apart by hand, so I was trying different tools and um, it wasn't really going that well, but I just kind of powered through it. The aviation snips were the star of the show as always. Once I had a few hardboard pond shapes cut out, I beveled the edges with my Dremel, which made such a mess. Having a vacuum close to the Dremel really helps collect the dust here. Definitely wear a respirator when you're cutting this stuff. Once I was done, I took the bases outside and spray painted the underside edges black. Then I blended a light and dark blue on the tops to create the illusion of deep water. You really can't go too light with the light blue here. It's gonna look a lot darker in the end. Once that was dry, I covered that with gloss Mod Podge. I would suggest watering this down to help hide the streaking. I tried doing some fancy texturing with an airbrush, but all of this got covered up in the end anyway, so it was kind of a waste of time. But if you want to make a non-frozen lake, this would be a good way to do it. Mod Podge dries clear in about an hour. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison, with and without. It definitely looks a lot better with that Mod Podge. My plan was to layer broken plexiglass over top of this to create an ice effect. My tool of choice for this was obviously a hammer. Hitting it on a flat surface doesn't really do much. Be warned, you should definitely wear goggles if you're gonna break plexiglass like this. Otherwise you risk a stray piece hitting you in the eye. And this is one of those situations where glasses are not enough. You could cover the plexiglass with a towel that would definitely help keep the pieces from flying around. I chose not to do that here, mostly for demonstration purposes and because it was nice to be able to see what the break looked like. After a few test breaks, I began assembling the ice. Starting with a large piece of plexiglass, I would use the edge of the base as a guide to break it into shape. Then I would puzzle smaller pieces together around that in a natural looking way. I ended up using almost all of my scrap pieces with this technique. Plexiglass isn't sharp like normal glass and can be handled safely for the most part. Just watch out for those really pointy pieces. You can cut this stuff with aviation shears to smooth out the edges, but it seemed like more work than it was worth to me to be that picky about how each individual piece looked. If you're wondering, I would guess I used about six square feet of plexiglass for this project. And one more thing here, you want about a quarter inch gap around the edge of the ice so a border can be layered over it. I glued the plexiglass down with clear Gorilla Glue. This stuff creates a really strong bond, but it's uh, also fairly expensive, so I was trying to use as little as possible. For the larger pieces, I opted to just glue around the edges, and since I wasn't using much glue, I had air bubbles forming underneath the ice shards, and I found out that if you push down on those periodically, as the glue dries, you end up with this really cool looking fractal pattern. It is fairly common to see air bubbles underneath icy water, so I just kind of rolled with it.
I also went over these with a sanding block to give them a more cloudy look. This also kind of adds a dry brushing effect on the edges of the smaller pieces. Alternatively, you could actually dry brush white paint on here and it would pretty much do the same thing. Around the pond's edges, I created raised earth with sand, black and brown paint, and more gloss Mod Podge. I slopped that mixture around the edges. No need to be too careful with this. Most of it's gonna get covered up by snow anyway. I would suggest doing two or three layers of this instead of just one like I did. When the earth slurry was mostly dry, I sprinkled woodland scenic snow on top of it and sealed that with scenic cement. I've never applied this stuff before, so it was a bit of a learning process for me. I ended up applying the snow way too thick and having to use an entire bottle of scenic cement to cement it in place. If I did this again, I would build up the border more with sand, give it a dry brushing with white paint, let that fully dry, and then apply a thin layer of snow as a topper. I am happy with how mine came out, but the process could definitely have been smoother. Woodland Scenic Snow is better applied in thin layers, which I did do over the ice, but it was just way too thick around the edges. Because I put the snow on so thick, I ended up using up this entire bottle of Scenic Cement, and instead of buying another bottle of that, I just mixed up my own, which is really cheap and easy to make. If you take anything away from this video, it's to make your own Scenic Cement. I'll put the recipe on the screen for you. I ended up spraying like four or five coats of scenic cement on these. You may notice that some of that got underneath the ice in some spots. And similar to the air bubbles, that was kind of another happy accident. It's going to take a while to fully dry, but I think it looks pretty cool. Like with a lot of my projects, variety is key, and anything that looks bad, you can just hide with snow. The last thing I did was dry brush a little bit of white paint on the ice, just to bring out some of the edges a little bit more. And I also made the cutest little sign. I made these to go with my Nordic Winter Battle Mat, which Cigar Box Battles sent out to me recently. I really like these plus size fleece battle mats. They're easy to store and great for large games. Definitely check them out. And here's the finished product. Thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful. A big thanks to my patrons. If you want to support the channel, becoming a Patreon supporter is a great way to do that. You get early access to videos that I post, exclusive post-battle report videos, as well as occasional crafting challenges, and access to our Discord community. That's all for now, I hope you have a good day, and I will see you later.